This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Passion, right? Okay, we're back. We're live. We're into the passion of opera. It always, nearly always makes me cry. I'm Jay Fidel, and I love opera. And this is Opera in Hawaii, and my co-host is Lynn Johnson. She's a member of the Opera Board. She's also an instructor of opera in various places. We'll ask her about that. Welcome to the show, Lynn Thank Johnson. you, and thank you for having me. This is a great show, and opera is fabulous, so that's why we're here. It is indeed. And our special guest today, uh, Leslie Goldman McInerney, who's an opera singer with Hawaii Opera Theater, and she's also uh, part of the Education Department yes. of Hawaii Opera Theater, and she's part of Carmen. Yes. She's a gypsy in Carmen. Mm. The name of her character is Frasquita. Yes. Yeah, we're going to talk more about that in a minute. But let's let's have a full discussion, Lynn, of, um, well, first, let's have the news. You had a talk last week, a few days ago. We did, yes, a like week to, ago, uh, Wednesday, and uh, I guess I give this for every opera. And this is at the Doris Duke Theater, and um, and it's it's about 10 o'clock in the morning, about a week and a half before the actual first performance of the opera. And I talk for about a half an hour. I have a PowerPoint, and then I interview the cast. And so it gets people geared up. It gets people geared up, and it's lots of fun. And of course, with Carmen, there was a lot to talk about. Yes. What did you say? Well, okay. This is going to be fun. I talked about basically the basic plot of most operas. And you know what the basic plot is? It's like high school. A likes B and B likes C, right? You're in love with somebody else, but they like somebody else. <laughs> so you have this in Carmen. So the plot of Carmen is A likes B, and for a while B likes A. But then B falls for C, and C and B like each other for a while, and then C falls in love with D, so B kills C. Mm -hmm. And there you have the plot Aside of Carmen. the last part, it sounds a little bit like a Seinfeld episode, <laughs> except it's more serious. It's very serious, but, but it's, a, it's a wonderful story. It's a wonderful story. And what's interesting is not only the story itself, but the background of the opera. And it's Bizet. Here is this fabulous, Georges Bizet, fabulous French composer who hasn't quite made it. You know, he's only like 36 years old. He's had almost hits, but everybody knows he's a good composer, and he knows that Carmen is going to be the turning point of his career. Yeah. The problem is that this wonderful opera Carmen is presented in the Opera Comique, which is a family theater. You're just supposed to have, like, Walt Disney stuff at the, at the Opera Comique. This is, this is the Opera Comique uh, in Paris. venue in Paris, right? In That's downtown right. Paris, yeah. That's right. And so what happens is, is that you have Carmen, and, and there was the assistant, I guess, producer of this, or, or director of this, of this uh, wonderful opera theater, and they said, you're going to have Carmen? I mean, doesn't she kill by her lover? <laughs> I mean, you have all these gypsies, and you have these thieves. We can't do this. It's not funny. We cannot do this. This is a family theater. People do not die. Do not have her die. You cannot have this. And then the librettist came to, to, to him and said, look, I mean, we're going to soften her character. And we're going to have gypsies, but they're going to be comic gypsies. And, uh, and we're introducing a woman that is totally chased with wonderful family values. Mikaela. And she's going to be Michaela. Yeah. And she's going to be in there. And then she does die, but we, we sneak it in at the end. And, and after a wonderful fanfare and celebration and the bright sunlight, you know, it's going to be fine. And his answer was, you can't have her die. And he finally resigned. Over finally that resigned issue. Over that issue. And then they but went. the opera went on. The opera went on. <laughs> and they found the perfect Carmen. And uh, Gali Marie, who, Philistine, she was like a Carmen herself. She was married at 15 a widow at 21, and then she was having an affair with another composer before the opera began, and then she and Bizet had, a, had an affair. I mean, she was perfect. She was perfect. But the audience was shocked. They were totally shocked, and they didn't know what to make of it. And it bombed. Oh. Actually, it didn't totally bomb. People said, this isn't quite right, and then it was sort of damned with faint praise. Uh-huh. And so it never made any money. Bizet died 
three months to the day after this opera. Oh, what a shame. He never knew that Carmen was going to be the fabulous master. It's the C in ABC, isn't That's it? That's right. It is. Aida, it is. Bohem, and Carmen. It's one of the most popular operas in the world, and he died three months yes. after it opened. Yes. What a shame. Yes, yes, yes. So um, anyway, it's really something. Yeah. Well, uh, okay, so you spoke about that at your talk. Uh, and then you will speak about that again at your Lanai talks just before the opera. The opera is opening this Friday. It's know? opening this Friday. Friday the 13th, not a good day for Carmen. Not a good day for Carmen. But you know what? It's worth it. It's got absolutely gorgeous music. And what's really neat about it is that when Carmen was first written, it was written for the opera comique, which has spoken dialogue. Yes. And we usually think of Carmen with recitative. Yes. We have spoken dialogue taken from the original production in this production in this opening production, friday that's this production, faithful to the history that's of the faithful opera. to the history so it moves the dialogue right along and we have superscripts you know if your french isn't in top form you can read those superscripts yeah and you know what's going on yeah. and she plays and leslie plays a, a one of carmen's very close friends i think it's time to introduce leslie to our audience yes i'd like to introduce leslie <laughs> goldman mcinerney she was born in hawaii born <laughs> yes. in hawaii um, I think, I'm not sure when you realize her talent, but instead of going to Punahou, everybody goes to Punahou or something like that, she went to the Interlaken, Interlaken Art School She's in Michigan because she was so excellent. talented and then Thank to the you. Manhattan School of Music. And I can tell you, she's very talented. Thank you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> We're all going to see on Friday. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> Yeah. So we what, don't we don't get super titles. You said that you were actually born uh, into music. Tell us about it. I, I wasn't necessarily born into music. My family all loves music, but my mother said when the doctor was bringing her her new baby, she heard this loud, loud screaming <laughs> from the other end of the hospital, and she was like, "Oh no!" And it was me. So yeah. I I suppose I've always wanted to express yeah. loudly. Yeah, that's not screaming. It's rehearsal. Right. That's. <laughs> <laughs> it's my welcome to the world, Aria. <laughs> well, this is the thing about opera singing, and this is the thing about opera. You don't have mics. Yeah. You have to project. Yeah. So she has a big voice. You have and to it's have. It's a beautiful yeah. voice, and it's got to be big. It can't be, be pretty and nice. It's got to be beautiful and powerful. Yeah. That's also why we always have a day in between to rest. Yeah. You know, they don't do operas back to back to back. Yeah, and you have to warm up, too, before you actually sing on the stage. Oh, uh, yeah. So it's like bookends. You you have to warm up, and then you have to cool down exactly. and rest. Yes. The next performance, yeah. yeah. And this so, is your debut, right? This is my debut oh, wow. at Hawaii Opera this, Theater. This is, this is news. We have a, we I'm have very, a scoop I'm here. I'm beyond excited. Yeah, I <laughs> can see. So what's your character like, Leslie? So my character, Frasquita, she is a thief. She is kind of flaky. She is a horrible, horrible flirt. She is absolutely obsessed with money. She kind of, she's all over all the guys. And um, I really enjoy playing her. <laughs> it's a stretch. I know it's a stretch. stretch. I really have a hard time tapping into that part of myself. But you you manage, manage. Manage. she's not, she's, she's not a shrinking violet. You know, she is a supporting role, but you know, there are no small roles. There are only small actors. There's nothing very small about me. So I'm really, really having fun. Yeah. yeah. So did you know the role before? I mean, you had to study up for this particular performance, this this uh, this uh, opera. I never performed this role beho before. I had, of course, seen the opera, and I'd been in several Carmen choruses, but I had never actually performed her. So okay, this is super fun. Yeah, it is yeah. super fun, yeah. <laughs> so uh, can you tell us the relationship of your character and Carmen? So I kind of... I'm a little bit jealous of Carmen sometimes because I have a very big crush on Escamillo, the Toreador. Yes. But um, we're best friends. We're her 
Mercedes, who is like my counterpart, we're with her all the time. Yeah. We're the three female thieves. There's a point where the three of us are like singing together, trying to lure um, Don Cairo or like flirt with him, and it's it's fun. It's just like we're three best friends. <laughs> <laughs> the girls out, yeah. Yeah, or, and then there's one point where Micaela comes in, and we're all standing just sneering at her. So we're like the mean girls. That's yeah, my right, favorite right, part. Right, right, right. I see that. <laughs> we're just like, who does she think she is? <laughs> is this sitcom? I tell you. <laughs> yeah. So you know, you, before we began the show, it was a scoop to me to find that the word Toreador was actually invented. For this opera by Bizet, can you that's talk about right. it? Yeah, that's right. No, he had, you know, he's a fabulous composer, as you know, and Carmen is his big piece, and he has this wonderful character, Escamillo, who Carmen eventually falls in love with and, and leaves Don Jose for. So he, I mean, Don, uh, Escamillo is perfect for Carmen. He's got a big ego, he's gorgeous, he's a hunk, he loves women, and the two are very well matched, and he sings this song. Well, they have this, this, Tortiador song, but but actually, I guess it was Toro. Toro means bull. Yes. And and he needed four syllables, so he came with Tordeador. And we all think of it. Oh, that must be Spanish, mm -hmm. right? We assume that that's Spanish. That was invented by Bizet, and it works. It, it works. works, and it, it has absolutely worked for works. 100 years around yeah, the world. Absolutely. <laughs> and it works around the world. When did this opera actually uh, premiere? Um, this 1875. Oh, oh this 1870. I believe it was. He was. Yeah, I think it was 1875. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. since then, this this word has found its way into every corner That's of the universe right. yeah, That's as a regular right. word, not, exactly. not as an opera word. <laughs> Yeah. So this shows you the influence that opera has yes. on it the does. language and the world. It does. Yeah. It absolutely does. And I'm thinking, you sing French, and usually we think of, you know, what's interesting about this season with the Hawaii Opera Theater, we don't have one Italian opera. Uh -huh. We have one French opera by Bizet. Then we have an Italian composer writing a French opera because he's in Paris. Which and is? everybody in Paris loves opera, which is the daughter of the regiment. Uh-huh. That, you've done and that before. We've done this before, and the last one is uh, Eugene Onegin by yes. Tchaikovsky, who yeah. everybody knows for you know all his wonderful symphonies. And he wrote this beautiful opera called Eugene Onegin, in and Russian. it's in Russian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's great. It's yeah, great. It's yeah, international. Yeah, it's global. Exactly. And, and right here in Hawaii, right. we do it ourselves. <laughs> oh, fabulous. So what's it like singing, um, singing French versus Italian? Um, I tend to be a little explosive with my consonances <laughs> and what I really learned through doing this opera is I don't always need to be like <laughs> or you know I, I well I guess we do that more in English than Italian but I've, I've learned to sort of soften things and we do sing a quintet which is very very fast and I was like how many I couldn't get all the words and I'm like eh, if I just put my mouth like I'm kissing the whole time I can do it easily. Yeah. So so with That's French, you want delicate consonances, and you want to just always look like you're, you're kissing somebody. And then it's yeah. much easier. Then it's, French, it's very French. Right. <laughs> it's it's <a> cultural <laughs> French. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a wonderful quintet. And that's in the second act. And you are with uh, Mercedes and, and Carmen, and then these two smugglers come in, and they need help moving merchandise. Mm -hmm. They need to help, and they say, nous avons besoin de vous, which means we need your help. And so it's very rhythmic mm -hmm. and exciting and it's really wonderful. Fun. It's just a it's great really quick fun. Hit. So uh, we're going to have a break in a minute, you okay. know, but Leslie, you could could you sing us out into the break with that that rapid that rapid French culture? That, the rapid one or the Toreador? Whatever you prefer. All right, why don't we do a little Toreador? Okay. Toreador, Now we have to take a break. <laughs> my heart. My heart. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. Yay. You know, it's, it's really interesting that uh, when, you, when you're next to somebody who's singing opera, it's just it, it's just mind-blowing. Well, I'll to be 18 and inches away anytime. from you. All right. I'll take that. <laughs> we'll take a short break. <laughs> This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me that 
coming there and making music. My dear. What are you doing? Okay, cool. Research says reading from birth accelerates the baby's brain development. And you're doing that now? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. this is the starting line. Push. Uh, when this is over, you're dead. Read aloud 15 minutes. Every child, every parent, every day. Hi, I'm, I'm in a state now, you know, because you sang so close to me and I felt the power of your voice and your emotive strength. I felt it all. Wow. Ah, I, I'll be looking. I'll be there. Okay. I'm in the second row, right I'll, near I'll Lynn, you know. Little yeah, please. I'll be waving at you. <laughs> so, you know, saying in the break, this is very interesting that in terms of character development, uh, Don Jose, his character evolves and develops. You see a different person from the beginning of the opera till the end, but Carmen stays constant. She's always what she was to begin with. Mm -hmm. And that's a really interesting sort of liter literary evaluation of how this works. Thought about it? Yes, yes. And, and of course, the name of the opera is Carmen, and she's so gripping because she's so against the convention. She's so against the way women should be. And, and she's strong, and she's powerful, and she's confident. And that was a real threat to household. You know, she's the kind of woman that men fall for, and women are threatened by. Yeah. Nice women are threatened by. Yeah. But she stays the same, and she never gives up her independence. She never gives up her freedom. And then you have Don Jose. He's a nice soldier. He comes from a nice background. He has a nice girlfriend. And, and, and then he becomes a deserter. And then he becomes a vagabond. And then eventually he becomes a murderer. And he's lost his, his career, his girlfriend, and he gives it all up for Carmen, and she dumps him for somebody else. Yeah. And so at the end, he's a broken man. Yeah. He's a broken man. Yeah. And to me, he's, I mean, yes, Carmen dies, and that is a tragedy. It's also a tragedy what happens to Don Jose. Sure. Yeah. And as we leave the opera, He's broken, and he's about to be arrested, and yeah. who knows what's going to happen to him. It isn't going to be good things. <laughs> no, but he won't care. He won't care because yeah. his, li his life is ruined anyway. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's great. So that's, that touches you, and it touches you because Carmen is, 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 in a way, I mean, you look at her today, she's an abused woman. She was, you know, she's killed by her lover because he can't control her, right? He can't control her. I, I was telling you before, I, I cry for Bohem cry for every time, right. but I don't cry for Carmen. Maybe I should cry for Don I Jose. Think, I think you should cry for Carmen, too. <laughs> I do, too. It, it was not her yeah. fault. She what never said, fault? I'll marry you and have your babies oh, okay. and be quiet. She never said that. And, you know, she, she and Escamillo are perfect together because he, I mean, when he decides to go after Carmen and she's kind of getting tired of Don Jose, and Escamilla says, well, she never was with anybody longer than six months. So, you know, he'd, he'd drawn his card and his time was there and he's ready for Carmen. He knows it's not going to last for more than six months. And he's okay with that. He's okay with that. I mean, Don, Don Jose was going to love her forever. That's not the way she's made. He's the only one on the stage who doesn't realize That's that she's right. flighty. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, let's talk about the scenes in which you are singing. Okay. okay. So there's three of them. Let's go through them. One is the cafe scene. Yes. One is the mountain scene yes. in the remote village, I guess. Yes. Uh, uh, remote, remote. It's actually not a village. It's just the countryside. The mountains. Yeah, yes. mountains. Yeah, because these are, these are crooks. I mean, they're thieves. They mm -hmm. have to be, yeah. you know, they have yeah. to hide Smugglers, away in the mountains. Smugglers, as it were. Smugglers. Yeah. We're yeah. camping out reading our tarot cards. Yes. Oh, you should yes. tell about that scene. That's a wonderful, oh, yes. wonderful scene. That's that. Yeah, that's, that's a fabulous scene. That's where you sort of get to know Mercedes and I's person and my personality. Um, we are reading our cards, and Mercedes, my friend. She is only drawing love. She's like, oh, I'm going to meet a man, and I'm so in love with him, and he loves me. And then I'm drawing cards, and I'm saying, I met someone. He is old, and he is rich, and he's going to put me up in my, his castle. And then the final thing where I get this fun high note is I say, oh, my gosh, he dies. Oh, I'm his 
Widow. And his heiress. <laughs> and then Carmen this comes in. Oh, it's so it's fun. fun. And fun. Yeah, and then Carmen comes in and she, she takes some cards and it's all death. Uh, and we're kind of like, oh, she's such a bummer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Party pooper. Yeah, totally. But I mean, it's, it's also kind of serious because we as gypsies full, full heartedly believe in these cards. What is a gypsy? I mean, what's the difference between a gypsy and another person? Uh, between the gypsy and Michaela or, or the people in, you know, in, in the town, Michaela so to speak? Michaela is not a gypsy. Right. What's the no. difference between yes. a gypsy and, and a straight person, if you will? So these gypsies, while well, they're thieves, they don't have a home. They, they, they live in the mountains. They essentially they have very, like, fluid living situations. <laughs> and they... They're on the run. They're yeah. smuggling. And as you can see from our costumes, they, they care more. They, they, I, we're wearing, like, as much jewelry as we possibly can be where we have sort of dirty like makeup our hair is crazy it's just a it's just a whole different culture we're yeah. constantly trying to earn a dollar we don't really care how however yeah yes. <laughs> They're not necessarily long-term planners. <laughs> no. You, you have it here on Think Tank. Right. <laughs> okay, so... They don't how, pack out, they don't plan out career paths. No. <laughs> no. no. So how does that, how does that, we're focusing on that scene in the mountains then. Yes. How, where does it start and where does it end? I mean, in terms of the, you know, its position in the, in the direction of the opera. Okay, so we start, the five of us, Don Quero, Remendado, Carmen, Mercedes, and myself, we start sort of staring at the audience singing about how our job is hard but it's strong and we must do it we are we're just kind of like stare at the audience intimidating them and then the <laughs> chorus joins in and we sing this beautiful chorus like saying listen listen and it's it's very powerful and then we go into the card trio which i love and then after the card trio we sing this wonderful chorus called conto duenier to, we are singing it to Don Quero saying, don't worry, you can get past, we can get past the, the customs man. We'll just lure them with our feminine ways. That's a pretty tune. Can I you, love can that. You can you sing, sing that tune? Can you sing that tune? Sing that tune. You know, wow. there's an escort company right next door, and they love to hear our opera shows. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That, and, that's, and the harmony in that is so yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. It doesn't beautiful do it harmony. justice when I just no, do it myself. No, but it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I it's love beautiful. it. Thank so you. So Thank so you. Beautiful. Wow, what a treat. Yeah. What a treat. What a treat. What a treat. Yeah, so what, what, you're, you're a soprano, yeah? Yes. And so what does that mean? Well, that means... On most days, anyway, unless I'm very tired, I can sing very, very high. Yeah. Which I love to do. Yeah. <laughs> and clear, like a bell. Yes. Yeah. On most days, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> depending on how well my daughter sleeps. No, yes, that's what it. That's what it means. So warming up helps. So oh, would you? Yeah. Would you, if you were to say soprano, and then you would put another adjective next to it, would you say anything other? I would say I'm a high lyric soprano. Uh -huh. So like you have the color tours, which are much lighter, which I actually used to be when I was young, which are like, <laughs> they do all that chirpy yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then you have your more dramatic sopranos, which are a little deeper and louder. And then you have your lyric sopranos, which thankfully get to do a lot of the like, Lead roles. Yes. Yeah, the yes. leading roles. Are yes, Mikael is also a yeah. lyric soprano. Yeah, yeah, that's great. But I think Fresquita's a little more fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I do all pinned up and no. Does, does I can't character... quite see you as Mikael. I can never do it. No, no, no. I, no that. I would go punch Carmen and be like, come on, Jose. And it's going to be Does your character evolve? She does a little bit, because at the very end, the very last scene, she, you see her concern for Carmen and Mercedes and Frasqueda. We go up and we're, we're warning her. We're like, you need to be careful, Carmen. San Jose's here. So you see very flighty mm -hmm. and fancy free women turn into some people that are very concerned for their friends. Ah, so now the, the relationship is, is, is revealed even further. Right. Um, and the, the audience can see that you care for her and you exactly. know the tragedy that's taking place. Yes, now. I mean, yeah. it's a very short little vignette that we're on in the fourth act, but I think it really shows kind of the humanity of Carmen and of the gypsies. I think it just shows sort of, you know, these people kind of all deserve to be treated fairly. And Yeah. yeah. Oh, 
I'm beginning to really love this opera. Yeah, I oh, see yeah. it with new eyes when I see it on Friday night. Yeah, oh, yeah, yes. yeah. So, how does that third that third uh, scene that you're involved in, the bullring scene? How does that evolve? I mean, what what happens there? What's your role in it? So, like I said, we we come in right after the wonderful wonderful children's chorus. We come in right after everybody's waving red flags and screaming for Escamillo. We come in, and Carmen is just she looks. Fabulous. She's decked out in this wonderful outfit and she's having a little love moment with Escamillo. And then Escamillo goes off and we come up to her and we're, we say, Carmen, you need to prongar the beware. Beware, Carmen. Please don't You say. see it. She yeah. doesn't see it. You and see it. And she's saying, no, no, no. And we're very upset. And then she, she tells us to leave, but then she sort of pauses and, and hugs us. So maybe she knows. Maybe she knows that something's going to happen. And then Don Jose comes in. And they get into a fight, and I don't want to spoil anything, but it's okay. It's not a mystery ending. No, it's not. But what happens is, and I was watching it from the sidelines, Don Jose pulls a knife on Carmen, and Carmen looks at him like, Ugh, please. And she takes the knife, and she pushes it down, and he sort of looks like this. And then she struts away in all of her fabulousness, and then he runs, and he turns her around, and he... Stabs her, and it's just like, oh. oh it's great stage direction. It's great. Isn't it? yeah. Our director's fabulous. Who was your director? Tara. Tara Faircloth. She's okay. fabulous. Okay. Our conductors, we we're very lucky. We're very lucky. Our conductor's just wonderful. And yeah. so. Yeah. Congratulations for putting together a great performance. This is a good selection. Well, this is really. And you got fun. all the right people. Oh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. I mean, I had nothing to do with it, but. Uh, but I think we have a wonderful director with Simon Crickle, and, and he got all the right players, the right director. I mean, it's going to be really exciting. Yeah. So let's, let's take a minute, just a minute, to talk about your educational um, uh, activities at yes. HOT. Yes. You're working with Eric Haynes to educate the public yes. and the, the children especially. It's wonderful. Um, I've been involved with the outreach program. This, is, this will be my third year, so basically since I moved home. And we take about, we take 30 minute long operas to hit like 80 different schools I mean to, and to the outer islands including the outer islands did yeah. you say eight zero I believe I wow I believe so like we wow. did That's or really we did, yeah we did about 80 we did 80 performances last year we counted them and wow. um, some I, I mean we do three performances a day sometimes and it's just such a pleasure because some of these schools have absolutely no music program yeah. nothing That's too you know bad. and they really should. Music is what helps our brains grow. So we're able to bring we're able to bring these operas to them. Um, Blythe, Kelsey, Eric Schenk, and Eric Haynes. They also do these um, programs for about I could be wrong, but I believe about six weeks, six to twelve weeks in schools where the children put on operas. I mean, so that's just amazing. They did Aida. We were at Blanche Pope Elementary. I helped with this one, and we did a whole opera about the Ahupua'a. The, and it was oh. and these, these children are mostly Hawaiian and they just oh, ate it up. Oh sure, it I was imagine. wonderful. And then we have a new program, relatively new, called the Young Voices Program, which I'm I'm one of the teachers with Eric Haynes, and it's basically any high school student from anywhere can join. It's free of charge. We get a grant for it, and we get to do workshops and master classes with these wonderful high school kids, and they're just wonderful. We have two of our girls in the adult chorus in Carmen. They're, wow. they're that sure. good. Yeah. That's Their so lives have been great. affected by what you've taught them. And they oh, yes. would not be there if no. we didn't have this program. Yeah. No, it's it's wow. so it's so Fabulous. important. And you get you get kids from all different from Punahou to to wherever. Every different walk of life comes and they all come together and they share this camaraderie in music and it's it's just so special to be a, a part of. A lot of gratification. Right. But you're, you're, you're seeding this knowledge, this special taste to all these kids. You're giving right. them a great gift. No, it's wonderful. I feel very blessed. <clears throat> and if you didn't hear, I was listening, and I hope you remember, and it'll be on the final exam, opera builds your brains. <laughs> that is why I'm so smart. <laughs> But singing is good for the soul. Yes, it's of good for the soul. Yeah. You know, you play music, you sing music, um, you have music in your life. Uh, it's 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 good for you. Have music in your life and come around and see opera. See Leslie Goldman McInerney. See Lynn Johnson. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, no, no, no. My talk. Come to my talk. One of the great things about our community. Yes. Thank you much, both of you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having us. Aloha till Aloha. next time. Aloha. <laughs>